first they came for Alex Jones, but few people said anything because they didn't want to be perceived as supporting a conspiracy theorist. And then two and a half years later, the seated president of the United States, Donald Trump, was banned from every major social media platform in America, too, shocking the Republican establishment, while those of us who had been warning that this exact scenario was going to happen said, we told you so. An unperson is a term from George Orwell's novel 1984 that describes someone whose very existence has been erased from society. And this is basically what happened to Alex Jones in August 2018, four years ago now. So here's just a brief history lesson. Within the course of just a few days, he was banned from YouTube, Facebook, iTunes, the TuneIn radio app, Spotify, Stitcher, Pinterest, and even LinkedIn. Years of shows and interviews just disappeared. Thankfully, many conservatives, even those who thought that Alex was a little bit crazy, were quite concerned about his sudden disappearance from the internet. Even Senator Ted Cruz defended Alex. Others came to his defense as well, including Bill Maher. Is uh, thrown off Twitter, I think, and Facebook and a few other platforms. I think he's going to get... Thank God! Uh, well... If you're a liberal, you're supposed to be for free speech. That's free speech for the free speech, speech you hate. That's what free speech means. I don't like Alex Jones, but Alex Jones gets to speak. Everybody gets to speak. Many others were quite concerned about him getting unpersoned overnight, but were afraid to speak out against it because they didn't want to appear as if they supported him because of some of the outlandish things that he has said over the years. But the big tech companies all coordinating with each other to ban him was just a test case and the beginning of the censorship that was to come. The editor-in-chief of The Verge, one of Vox Media's online properties, started calling for Fox News to be taken off the air next. PBS did a report about Alex's deplatforming and in that report complained that he had inspired countless imitators who sell merchandise and then showed a clip of me from one of my YouTube videos promoting my popular t-shirts. Jones has spawned hundreds of imitators, mostly right-wing, anti-government conspiracy theorists, peddling merchandise and the real story the government doesn't want you to know about. Apple CEO Tim Cook then said it was a sin for social media platforms not to ban people the left deems hateful and divisive. He was given the first Courage Against Hate Award from the ADL for banning Alex Jones' podcast on iTunes. And during his acceptance speech, he said that he has only one message for those who seek to push hate. You have no place on our platforms. Of course, voting for Donald Trump is considered to be hate speech by the Silicon Valley Titans, and it won't be long now before they include negative tone of voice, contorted facial expressions, or even supposed code words and dog whistles into their terms of service as things they'll ban people for. If someone is reporting on a new television commercial featuring two gay men who are raising their adopted child as gender neutral and react with a disgusted look on their face or a sarcastic, I'm sure the child will grow up to be totally normal. That will likely be a violation of their policies. George Orwell warned against such thing in his classic novel, 1984, saying, quote, to wear an improper expression on your face, to look incredulous when a victory was announced, for example, was itself a punishable offense. There was even a word for it in Newspeak. Face crime, it was called, end quote. They'll start claiming that certain words or phrases are code words for something else, just like they've done with the OK hand sign, and then soon nobody will be safe from being smeared as a white supremacist, Islamophobe, homophobe, or xenophobe for saying certain facts out loud. The left are now engaged in a Maoist-style attempted overthrow of our culture and our country, and are systematically purging influential dissenting voices from social media. But they don't just want prominent vocal opponents of the New World Order silenced, they want our lives destroyed. They've developed a formula to take people down. First, a few unscrupulous liberal online outlets label certain conservatives alt-right or right-wing extremists, and then the editors at Wikipedia update those people's pages to claim they're white nationalists or Nazis, and then use those dubious reports as sources to solidify the smear. Then that causes a cascade of cancellations and continued censorship. We call it the wrap-up smear. If you want to talk politics, you call it the wrap-up smear. You smear somebody with falsehoods and all the rest, and then you merchandise it. And then you write it, and they'll say, see, it's reported in the press that this, 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 and this. So they have that validation that the press reported the smear, and then it's called the wrap-up smear. Now I'm going to merchandise the press's report on the smear that we made. And it's 
It's a tactic. How far will this modern Maoism go, you wonder? Will Visa, MasterCard, or American Express deactivate certain accounts because the banks don't like what some people say or believe? Will Bank of America or Wells Fargo start closing people's checking accounts because they don't like their politics? Some banks are already doing just that. Chase Bank issued a letter to former Proud Boys leader Enrique Tarrio that they would be closing his account and he had until the end of the month to move all his money somewhere else. Then Joe Biggs, a former reporter for Infowars and Proud Boy member who banks at Chase, got the same notification. And Laura Loomer as well. After word spread of this shocking move outraging many veteran groups because Joe Biggs is an Iraq veteran, Chase reactivated his account but wouldn't give him a reason as to why they had initially banned him. A senior software engineer at Google recommended the company delete Donald Trump's Gmail account and that of everyone working in his administration when he was the president. The software engineer also suggested that they brick Trump's phone. A brick phone, if you're not familiar with the term, means one that is completely deactivated and won't even turn on. So the engineer was literally recommending Google remotely disable Trump's phone, the president of the United States, since they're owners of the Android operating system, which it uses. We only know about this because the proposal was included in a series of documents obtained as part of a lawsuit filed by former Google employee James Damore, who was fired after circulating a memo about how the company's obsession with diversity is misguided. While the company didn't authorize those radical actions, Who's to say in the future Android or Apple won't ban certain people from using their phones? When you activate a smartphone, you agree to the terms and conditions, even though hardly anybody ever reads them. Those terms also say that the manufacturer can change the terms anytime they want. So what's to stop them from adding a clause that says they reserve the right to brick your phone or your computer if they feel you're engaging in certain kinds of behavior or speech that they find objectionable? Perhaps Google didn't want the publicity and the backlash of sabotaging the president of the United States cell phone, but what's to stop them from doing it to people who aren't as powerful or well-known? How far will the Silicon Valley titans go to stamp out vocal critics of the radical leftist agenda? Will video editing software companies deactivate their software on people's computers if they don't like the content they're creating? Will Photoshop not sell their software to artists who are making the wrong kind of memes? Or will Microsoft and Apple refuse to license their operating systems on the computers or smartphones of political activists, social media personalities, or authors they consider to be racist, sexist, homophobic, transphobic, Islamophobic, anti-Semitic, or whatever? Or maybe their local ISP, internet service provider, won't even allow them to have an internet connection. Or will start blocking certain websites. What if Priceline or Orbitz decides not to sell you a plane ticket because they refuse to do business with hateful people? Well, Airbnb recently ban Michelle Malkin because she was a guest speaker at a conference whose ideas they disagree with. What's next? Is Enterprise not going to rent her a car? Or a popular gas station chain won't sell certain people gas? What if a major grocery store chain decides they won't sell you any food because you've been labeled an extremist by the liberal media? If Visa or MasterCard blacklist you, then you won't even be able to have a debit card. If no banks will allow you to have an account, how can you cash your paycheck? In the Bible, there's a prophecy in the book of Revelation that says one day nobody will be able to buy or sell anything unless they accept the mark of the beast, warning that people who don't worship the counterfeit Christ will be completely cut off economically from the modern world. And it appears that we're beginning to see the justifications for such widespread bans by those who control the backbone of the financial system. Even Coinbase a popular cryptocurrency exchange has banned people like Gab's founder Andrew Torba and others from buying or selling Bitcoin. Listen, behind the sarcasm and jokes, I actually have a very serious message I'm trying to get across. I just code it in comedy a lot of times to make it more palatable. There's a method to my madness, I assure you. And if you like my videos, then you should really read my books because contained on those pages are the fully uncensored and very well sourced documentation and analysis of what it is that's going on. So order the liberal media industrial complex or Hollywood propaganda, how TV movies and music shape our culture in paperback from amazon.com or download the ebooks from any of the major ebook stores, Kindle iBooks, Nook or Google Play. I really have to tone down my reports and my videos for obvious reasons, but wait until you get the full story in my books. So head on over to amazon.com or click the link in the description below and check them out. <laughs>